the commercial health segment is the largest health insurance segment in the U.S. But in recent years, premium and enrollment have begun to slide. Here to discuss a recent AM Best report is Joe Zara, director, and Jason Hopper, associate director. And Jason, we're going to start with you today. The report notes that the segment's share of overall medical premium is down. What is driving that? Sure. Thanks, John. Uh, so I'd start by saying that commercial, the commercial segment is the largest segment um, of the health insurance industry by both uh, in terms of premium as well as enrollment. Uh, the commercial segment premiums have been consistently increasing, um, though they had been flat in 2019 and through the third quarter of 2020, our latest available data. Um, so, but despite the increase in premium, the share um, has been declining for a number of years. Um, accounting for 56% of total health premium in 2009, dropping all the way to 40% in 2019. Um, so even though premiums have been growing, the growth rates at government programs, Medicaid expansion and Medicare Advantage, have been growing a lot faster, which has in turn pushed the share down. Now, Medicare expansion was greatly, uh, so uh, large increases uh, due to the Affordable Care Act, and the aging population of the United States uh, has played a factor into the uh, growth in the Medicare Advantage space. Jason, let's back up for a second on that. Could, could you discuss the uh, makeup of the commercial health segment? What are the different groups that make up this segment? Sure, so there, there are two main areas. Um, one is the fully insured and one is the self-insured. Uh, so the fully insured, which is what we predominantly talk about and refer to when we speak of the commercial segment, includes individual health insurance, uh, such as the Affordable Care Act marketplace exchanges, as well as the small employer group and the large employer group. Um, on the other hand, um, I mentioned self-insured. That's where employers take on their own risk and buy administrative service contracts or administrative services only type products. Um, and those types of products do have lower margins uh, for health insurers, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, but large group mark, the large group employer market is by far the largest uh, segment within the commercial space, accounting for between 55 to 60 percent of premium. The individual space is the second largest since 2015, again, because of the Affordable Care Act and the growth uh, that brought upon it there. Um, and that now accounts for about a quarter of premium. Uh, up from about 17% pre-ACA, and the small group has seen consistent premium growth, um, but again, similar to the government programs, the growth at the large group and the individual group has outpaced the small group, uh, therefore pushing its share down. Joe, is COVID impacting the segment? From, from an enrollment and top-line premium view, the, the virus didn't result in a larger-than-expected enrollment or premium decline in the, in the commercial health segment through the third quarter. Uh, most carriers were indicating that the individual and groups uh, were sticking with their existing carriers uh, during the pandemic, which did dampen sales. Um, but on the flip side, persistency was better. Um, many employees were furloughed, um, but they were given the option to keep their health insurance benefits. Um, the government was implementing federal legislation and programs aimed at uh, providing financial assistance, stimulus, tax relief, forgivable loans to help uh, both individuals and small group employers. And all of this has helped keep stability in membership and premium. But we have yet to see um, the final year end enrollment and premium numbers and what they'll look like with the start of job losses in December and the rise in COVID cases during the latter part of 2020. Uh, in premium rebates in the fourth quarter, um, we have to see what, what that's going to mean for premium and enrollment. On a claims perspective, health insurers saw an overall delay in utilization in the first half of 2020. Surgeries were postponed. People stayed away from doctor's offices. And that dynamic was a bit more uh, pronounced for commercial health writers. Uh, but claims activity began to normalize. Most were reporting in, in June it started, and then over the summer, claims were back at, at normal. And then there was an offset to the lower claims where insurers did bolster benefits and payments to providers, offering premium credits, uh, copay waivers for virtual visits, and uh, payments for PPE and telehealth visits. 
Let's talk a little bit about the Affordable Care Act. Joe, how did the ACA segment's enrollment look for the year? Sure. In, in December, um, CMS actually reported that the ACA's open enrollment for 2021 was steady with the prior year, showing about 8.2 million enrollees. Um, and that's despite several states having switched to state-based exchanges. So this is a good indicator that there's some stability now um, for the segment and uh, the commercial market um, individual ACA exchange enrollment is, is stabilizing them. And as we look forward, the, the president-elect is proposing limiting premiums to 8.5% of income as uh, part of his COVID package, American Rescue Plan. And this could result in an increase in enrollment in 2021. Jason, how are insurers in the commercial segment faring from an earnings perspective? So there definitely has been a turnaround uh, in the early years of the ACA, uh, specifically the exchange business. Um, there was a lot of profitability woes. Uh, many companies are experiencing underwriting losses. That has since now turned around after pricing corrections have been implemented um, and another a uh, bunch of other factors have uh, aided the profitability that we are now seeing. Small and large group employer, um, the segment has seen tight margins but have been fairly consistent, have been profitable. Um, I would note profitability has been felt throughout the industry. Uh, over 70% of writers in the individual market now experience profitability. Uh, over 60% in the small group and about half in the large group. Um, so each segment does aid earnings. Um, ASO is also profitable, but does have tighter margins. Uh, so one thing that we expect to see heading into 20, uh, 2021 and forward, um, as we see this shift to more ASO type business, we do expect overall margins to uh, continue to contract a little bit. Um, other things that might factor in uh, 2021 profitability uh, is more normalized utilization after we saw a huge decrease in the second and third quarter uh, due to the impacts from COVID and elective surgeries getting canceled and, and things of that nature. Um, I know there are hot spots in the country now where sur elective surgeries are getting canceled again. Uh, we'll see how long that might last and how widespread that might become. Um, but those are some things that uh, we'll continue to monitor throughout 21 and going forward. Joe, let's talk a little bit more about 2021. I would imagine that there's a lot of uncertainty when it comes to expectations. Uh, yes, John, there's quite a bit of uncertainty continuing uh, into this coming year. Uh, there's uncertainty around the economy, the impact it's going to have on investments, balance sheet, operating performance metrics. We have the new administration coming in. There's going to be new legislation and regulations that the health sector is going to have to deal with. Uh, earnings could be pressured, as Jason was talking about, utilization increasing. Um, last year, it was talking about a pent-up demand effect that, that could come into play. Uh, there's the trajectory of COVID, the vaccine's effectiveness. Uh, this, this all is going to have impact on sales, enrollment, premium, and earnings. And of course, there's operational uncertainties that uh, carriers are going to have to deal with. So, Joe, how are carriers dealing with that uncertainty? Uh, com companies are asking themselves that question right now. Uh, appears in uh, January thus far in 21, that's a status quo. Uh, we can expect uh, longer term office closures, work from home type environment. Uh, some have said uh, April to mid year opening. Um, they're looking at how they'll return to a work in the office environment safely and effectively. Uh, they're investigating technology uh, modernization, not just legacy uh, system replacements like they've done in the past, but reinventing web and mobile-based apps and service capabilities focused on customers and how they'll best serve them given what we've all been dealing with this last year. Um, some are reviewing strategy around corporate culture, how, how they go about talent acquisition in a remote world. You can now recruit uh, broader, even go uh, on a global footprint. And, and most are being more conservative with projections, um, have eliminated public guidance for some of the public companies. There's a focus on bolstering capital, building balance sheet strength, and building conti contingent liquidity. Uh, but overall, the health carriers have handled the pandemic 
and the uncertainty we saw in 2020 um, and leading into this year, very strategically and are cautiously optimistic uh, that with the rollout of the vaccine, that the COVID situation will improve later in 2021. Thanks, Joe. Jason. Thanks, John. Thank you. That was Joe Cesara, Director, and Jason Hopper, Associate Director. You can find the full report online at ambest.com. For AMBest TV, I'm John Weber.